I'm Dr. Greg Emerson, and over the next few weeks, I'm going to be releasing some videos on why we should be out wild food foraging, and more importantly, how we should be doing wild food foraging. And probably the, mo the two most important reasons that we should be doing it is number one, it gets us away from our computers, our, our phones, and our existence at Homo sapiens are not ideally suited to, and gets us out to where we belong, which is out in the wilderness, and the benefits of that, that is on its own are huge. And the second reason is that wild foods are nutrient dense, which means they contain a lot of nutrients, phytonutrients, minerals and medicines that Homo sapiens thrive on. So we can either eat food which is nutrient deplete, that we buy from fast food restaurants and, and the wrong aisles in the supermarket, or we can come out in the wild and get food which contains natural medicines. So you get your food from uh, the, the wild foods, you get your medicine wild foods, or you get your empty food and get your medicine from a tablet that you get from the doctor. So we're out now uh, with uh, a good friend of ours, Ben Logan, uh, near in Wanaka in the South Island of New Zealand, and we've been out collecting uh, perhaps the king of wild foods, which is uh, pine pollen uh, from the, the wild pine trees here. And I've got a couple of questions for, uh, for Ben about why and how we've been doing this. So Ben, first of all, how long have you lived in the Wanaka area for? I've lived here for three and a half years now. And what sort of work did you hear? Uh, I work at an organic food store and I'm a full-time triathlete. Right, excellent. And you, you do some work with uh, epilepsy uh, for collecting and, and, and promoting the uh, more knowledge of epilepsy. Right? Exactly, yep. We started a foundation called the Epilepsy Collective and we're just helping people who suffer from that quite badly. All right, and this giant wolf between us, what's what's the story with her? Uh, he's called Masca and he's Alaska Malamute, which we've had for a couple of months now. We adopted him. and. Um, he loves to be outdoors, loves foraging, loves going on adventures, so he's a perfect partner for this. All right, great. So can you explain to us, first of all, uh, parts of the pine tree which we can use for food and for medicine? One of the most powerful is the pine pollen, which comes from the male cactin, which so we've been... Is that, this is there? This is that. What's, is that, that's the male cactin? That's the male it? cactin, so that's the male spore, which releases the pollen, which is the male sperm. Right, which is very different to this part of the tree, which is the... The, the female, so when they... Combine ideally grows more pine. Right. Okay. Um, so, it's, and you just uh, collect the pollen by finding the right ones and. Exactly. Yeah. So we've already taken the pollen from that. We've taken a lot as we can. <laughs> so it's about a five-day period each spring. Uh, it can go very quickly, so you've got to be very quick with how you gather it. Uh, but you can use the cactin for the pollen. You can use the pine needles, um, very high in vitamin C. You can use them in tea, and you can use the pine bark as well. So um, how do you use the pine bark? Uh, they can be boiled. I think they can be tinctured as well. Uh, the health benefits of that I've forgotten. Right. And what about um, uh, some of the benefits of the pine pollen, which we've been out collecting today? In fact, you can see, if you can probably see on the film, they're actually covered in pine pollen, and we've been collecting it in uh, paper bags. You just put in there and shake, and you get a whole lot of uh, pollen released. You can see on my fingers. What are some of the benefits of uh, consuming the pine pollen and best ways to consume the pine pollen? I just put it in a tincture of water. It's a um, very powerful phytoandrogen, so it's a plant-based steroid. It's a um, very powerful adaptogenic herb as well. Um, very high in superoxide dismutase and glutathione. Um, so you can, uh, when you say tincture, you mean you put uh, the pollen inside some alcohol? You can alcohol and extracts the medicine from it as well. Right, which is different to perhaps putting the pine pollen straight in a smoothie where you're getting the the water-based nutrients out of it. Exactly. So, yeah, they can be absorbed differently, and I guess that's a different way you can have a tincture or just have it um, straight with water. And as Ben said, one of the problems with the world today is that we're living in a world of estrogens, plastics that our food comes wrapped in, and the bisphenol A inside the plastics, and a lot of other chemicals in the environment, the pesticides, which all have an estrogenic action, and, and androgenic hormones, which counterbalance the estrogens, uh, are going much less in our food supply and we're all ending up in a state of estrogen dominance which has been associated with lots of cancers so trying to rebalance the hormones by using adaptogenic herbs which balance hormones and by increasing our androgenic intake of of foods which contain natural androgens and this is the king of foods which contain natural natural androgens helps counterbalance that estrogen dominance program. so thanks very much uh, ben for taking us today so now to sell today has been a fantastic uh, experience uh, make sure you like the video, make sure you share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get more videos on how you can use wild foods 
to not only survive in today's world, but also thrive. Thanks very much for watching.